Hi there! Uh, hopefully by the time you've reached this video you've already watched the Microsoft Excel video showing how to create histograms and box plots, uh, box and whisker plots uh, within Microsoft Excel. Now we're talking about an altogether different piece of software called GraphPad Prism. Not as many people have heard of this one, but they have made a real mark in the biomedical research community by trying to make statistics more accessible for everyday bench researchers. So uh, GraphPad Prism 7 is the current version. I am using a demonstrator version. When you uh, first download the software, you get 30 days to evaluate it, so this is an example of that demonstration. So in this case, uh, we have a rather different looking interface, and we see we've got a, an altogether different kind of toolbar. but. We'll try to walk through some of the basic features as we go. We're going to start by creating a new project. So by creating a new project, uh, we're setting up for PRISM to understand the kind of data that we're providing to it. You can see that there's a wide variety of tutorial data already available for you to evaluate different kinds of analyses. But here we're just going to use the replicate values uh, approach, the very first uh, option that, that uh, the software permits. So one of the things that immediately occurs is that you get a whole bunch of different columns, and each of these columns can then represent a, uh, another data set that we've entered into this. Um, at the moment, we don't have a lot of information, just a blank data table and one graph that's also blank at the moment. Rather than type our data in, we will use the File Import menu in order to grab the data from the same file as we used in the Excel example. That's the distribution text file. I open that file. And I'm asked a quick question here. Do I want to read the data from the file and then uh, ignore any, any subsequent changes that are made to that text file? Or do I want to remember that these data came from that text file and that any changes made in that text file should be reflected in the PRISM object as well? In this case, we're simply going to do a, a straightforward data import and uh, more or less become uh, independent of any changes made in that text file. So now we have our list of values. As you may recall, there are 400 of them. Uh, and we see that not only did we get a new data table up top, we also received a new graph in here. Um, but you see it's a little uncertain how it should visualize this. We're going to include, uh, incorporate these data as a column table, but I'm going to uh, have to answer some more questions about how I want to visualize them next up. So I'm going to do what's called a jitter plot, a jitter plot. Uh, and if I click on this, you can see that it's going to show all of these data points uh, where each data point is represented as a dot. So if I click OK, I immediately get the visualization of the data. I see that most of them fall above zero, but there's a small number that fall below. And we have a maximum value somewhere in the neighborhood of seven and a half. OK, so those are the data as they are, but our goal here is to get a histogram. So for that, we're going to start the Insert menu. And within Insert menu, we're going to specify that we want a new analysis. Under New Analysis, we have a variety of, of categories. You can see Transform and Normalize, XY, Column, Grouped Analyses, Contingency Tables, etc. But the answer we want is right here in Column Analyses. In Microsoft Excel, we use the frequency function in order to calculate how many times a certain event happened that we had a hit within this bin. So we're going to run the frequency distribution analysis here, and we specify that we're going to do this on data set A. We hit OK, and we see that again, GraphPad Prism is doing that thing that it does so well. It's going to try to guide us through the analysis of each step. So in this case, we're going to do a frequency distribution. The cumulative frequency distribution is a little specialized. I'm not really going to go into that one. But we want to count how many different values of these 400 fall inside each bin. You'll remember that when we did the example in Microsoft Excel, we had to specify bin boundaries. So we chose a very uninventive strategy. We said the first bin ends at 0, the second bin ends at 1, the third bin ends at 2, and so on. But GraphPad has the ability to select an appropriate number of bins given the range of the data and the number of data points that we have. So we're going to specify that the centers of the first and last bins can be whatever it automatically decides it should be, that the bin width should be chosen automatically as well. And at the end of the day, we want it to create a graph of the results. So it's nice to have the frequency table, but seeing that graph 
will make it a little clearer to us. So at that point, we click OK. And over at the left, we see that we have had three new objects show up. Under histogram of the distribution file, we have a frequency distribution table. You can see at the left, we have bin centers. Now, there are a couple things I want you to notice here. One is that in Excel, we had to choose our own boundaries. And being simple, we, we simply uh, specified that, that we would use integers, a bin boundary at 0, a bin boundary at 1, a bin boundary at 2. But GraphPad is going to define these bins not by their edges, upper or lower, but by the center of the bin. So that's a helpful, a helpful little clarification. The next thing is that GraphPad decided it had enough data that it could show uh, a bin at every 0.5 value. So we have twice as many bins in the GraphPad analysis as we did in Excel based on its automatic bins assessment system. So we can already see our little values now uh, appearing uh, in the second column. We see that our most common uh, one, I believe, is 45, appearing at a center of 2, uh, and so on. I want to I don't want to neglect, however, that we got a second table as an output from this, and that's the descriptive statistics table. Uh, from this, you can see that we're getting some distributional information back. We know that the median of our data is 3.527. Our mean value is 3.56. It records that there were 400 data points to begin with. So both of those tables uh, were gotten with one function call, the, the frequency distribution. But of course, what we wanted to see was the graph that resulted from this. So when we look at the graph, we see that this looks, for all the world, just like what we had in Excel, except that it's a little more finely grained. It's, it's splitting up into twice as many bins, and so these uh, labels down at the bottom are a little crowded. They've, they've used diagonal font to make them all fit together. So a little bit more straightforward. Uh, there's certainly a bit of a zoo as we try to keep track of all the different files that appear within the structure, but um, we have successfully imported a file uh, produced some summary statistics, generated frequency distributions, and visualized it uh, in our histogram. So that, in a nutshell, is all that we wanted to do with the first phase of this project. So we've generated our histogram. Uh, next up, we will cover the problem of how to do uh, box and whisker plots within GraphPad. For the second part of the GraphPad tutorial, we want to do a box plot. Now, you remember that the box and whisker plot in Excel took us a huge number of steps because it was designed to give us uh, stacked, uh, stacked bars uh, in a figure, and then we had to sort of re-envision what all of those look like. But the good news is that GraphPad is much better equipped to give us a proper box plot. So again, we're starting with just the, the basic interface, and again, we're going to have to create a new project file like this. And it will ask us questions, but again, we're going to just enter replicate values. We have a problem here in that the data we have are formatted a little differently than the software really expects. So we're going to just create a new table. Uh, and again, we're going to import from, a, uh, from our input file. This A versus B will provide us the input data. So open, and we should get I'm going to just insert the data, no link to the underlying file. We can import. So you'll note that something odd has happened. If, if you were to return to the original file, you'll recall what we had intensities and labels. Intensity labels, intensity labels. So each point, after these 40 first A values, we have a 40 B values that show up. But when we look at what happened in GraphPad, we see that the numeric information has been retained and the headers have been retained, but all those A and B letters vanished. So GraphPad is definitely focusing on having numeric values only. Happily, we remember that there were 40 A values and 40 B values. So we're going to just do a little bit of patchwork here uh, and grab from number 41 down to uh, cut it away so that we can paste it down in a new spot. So here we have our uh, 40 values we've now cut using control X. I can jump back up to the top of the file here and lay down those 40. So you should see when you come to row 40, you have a, an even match between these two. That's great. Now let's uh, change the labels here. These are going to be set A and the second one we're going to call set B. 
Otherwise, it'll think that one is intensities and one is labels, and that's a little weird. So now we have our data imported correctly, um, and we had to do some, some messing around that we didn't really like very much, but it's sometimes what you do. A lot of time, uh, statistics projects are, are bulked down by just all of the different uh, things you have to fix about format before you can make sense of your data. All right, so um, we again have uh, some graph information and so on that's being uh, retained here, but let's go ahead to insert the analysis that we want. Actually, we want a new graph. This isn't going to be an analysis per se. So new graph of existing data. We click on this and we see that uh, we're going, we, we can select just one subsection of the data. Maybe we only want to do set A and B and we had A, B, and C in our input table. In this case, though, we want to plot them all. We have both A and B. We want them plotted side by side. Now, we have a fair number of options on this score. Uh, help, helpfully, you can just sort of wander through here and, and visualize what each of those would be. And you can see that box and whiskers is already one of the standard plots that's available to us. So if you click on that, you'll see that you have a series of options that you can use to guide you in this. Um, we're going to use a pretty simple version of this, just the min to max plot. Um, and one of the things that this underlies is that every time you produce a box plot, it's very important that you know what each of these different pieces represents. What is the top whisker? Is that the, the normal range, uh, the, the standard range of the data excluding outliers, or is it the highest value that you saw? In this case, our whiskers will touch the highest and the lowest values that we saw uh, from these distributions. Okay, so we click OK, and in no time flat, we have ourselves a plot. Uh, so here we're looking at the lowest value from set A, the highest value from set A. I believe these are medians, uh, uh, the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. And we see set B has been separated from us. That didn't take a lot of clicks, did it? The software simply knows what a box plot is and it's able to produce that for us without a whole lot of screaming. Now, you may run into some people who are really kind of worried about these plots that want to know more exactly how the data really line up if you look at them against such a plot. So let's try a different one. We're going to uh, insert a different kind of graph, a, a new graph of existing data. We'll do this again. This time we're going to use what I frequently call a jitter plot, but some people just call a scatter plot. That's fine. Uh, and we're going to show means and standard deviations underneath our data. So uh, as the plot, as the cartoon here suggests, the data underlying these distributions will be visualized with this, not just means, medians, and, and uh, 25th and 75th percentiles. So let's click OK. You can see that the data look quite different, don't they? Uh, so the, the mean value for this distribution is around 2 the mean value for this distribution is around four, and in both cases, the standard deviation is around one away from that. But more importantly, you can see where every point is. If you have 10 or fewer data points, it, there's really not a lot of reason to avoid simply plotting all of those values uh, around each other. Now you might ask, what, does, what has the software done by scooting some of these points further left and some of these points further right? And this is kind of the magic of the jitter plot. It simply tries to put as many dots in as small a space as possible, but without overlapping any points. If all of these were on a single line, you can see that in this area, they would be blanketed so thickly that you could no longer tell whether there were a lot of points or just a few there because it would just be a solid black blob. So by jittering them apart uh, so that the points within A scoot a little bit left or a little bit right, it's able to show them all right next to each other. So the box plot is an excellent view, and we can see that it's still, um, it's still available to us uh, as one of the, the prior graphs. But this new graph, this jitter plot, is another option that we can use for visualizing our, our, two, uh, our two distributions. So that's uh, our quick tour of GraphPad Prism, and I hope this is useful to you in seeing a software designed to aid you in coming up with the, the best images that it knows how to create.